turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's time for you to come out and commune. Turn to your other neighbor and say, it's time for you. Stop wasting time. Say, come out and commune. You could be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let me have your undivided attention, as our pastor would say. By now, you should have already went to the bathroom. Amen. Amen. So let's make sure we kind of limit the walking. Amen. In Jesus' name. Because it's not distracting for me, but it may be for your your neighbor. Amen. All right. Turn to your neighbor again. Say, come out and commune. Amen. After being, y'all, in a season of prayer and fasting over the last three days, with the church uh, here, and after seeing the climate of the body of Christ at large, the Spirit of God led me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6 to release his prophetic information to you. See, the enemy don't want this word to come out, I'm telling you. He don't want this word to come out. I'm telling you, that's why we got mic problems already at the beginning. But turn to your neighbor, say, the devil is defeated, and Jesus is Lord. All right, so the the Spirit of the Lord gave me this scripture to preach unto you, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, to release a prophetic word in your ear that will take you into the next season of your life. Seeing that we have communion, and of course we're gonna pass blessed oil at the end of service, the anointing oil at the end of service. I want to move rapidly. Somebody say move rapidly. Second Corinthians chapter six reveals unto us the heart of the apostle Paul, who has both been reconciled to God, and he writes, to invite others to be reconciled to God as well. And we know his story out of the book of Acts. The Bible says that he was blinded and knocked off his beast as he was on his way to kill some Christians. Yeah, he was a murderer of Christians. He did not believe that Jesus was the son of the living God. He was a murderer. But God sent the prophet Ananias And Ananias said, I really don't want to go because he's out there killing Christians. And I I am standing on the word and I might end up assaulted. Amen. Hallelujah. So he really had to fast and pray and believe God before he even went to Paul to open up his blinded eyes. But in all of that, Jesus calls Paul into ministry who was once a destroyer of Christians. Now he is called to be a deliverer of Christians. Yeah, Paul wanted the church at Corinth to be united, reunited rather, with God. But he was being stonewalled by the very people he wanted reconciled. Have you ever been there? Wanting more for people than they want for themselves, and they're blocking you. He, he so desperately wanted change for the people, but the people were stonewalling him. Ah, maybe you're not familiar with this word, stonewalling. Yeah, it is a refusal to communicate. It, it's stonewalling. It's a, it's a refusal to cooperate. Such behavior occurs in situations like marriage guidance counseling, where you got one pouring out their heart and the other one with their arms folded, looking like they had some pickle juice. We see this stonewalling in diplomatic negotiations. We see it in political arenas and we see it in legal cases. It's it's the body language that indicates and reinforces this stonewalling. Uh Uh-huh. When a person has this spirit, and yes, it is a spirit, yeah, it's a spirit of stonewalling. They avoid contact and engagement with the other party. Yeah. Stonewalling. Somebody say stonewalling. 
I ain't say stonewall. I, I say stonewalling. Amen. Stonewalling. Yeah. People will use deflection even in a conversation, a conversation pointless or even insignificant. I don't know if you ever been there. Yeah, I don't know. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? Pe people of God, tactics in stonewalling include giving sparse or even vague responses. they refusing to answer questions or they respond to questions with other questions. Stonewalling. I'm a preach up in here. I'm going to tell you. I'm a preach. Even if you ain't saying amen, I brought my amen with me. Amen. In Jesus' name, I brought it with me. Holy Ghost is saying amen, amen, amen. Stonewalling can be used as a stalling tactic rather than avoidance tactic. In many narcissistic narcissistic people, narcissistic people are great at stonewalling. Yeah, 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 yeah. We find a lot of them in church. And I'm convinced, y'all, that this stonewalling, it is a spirit. It's a spirit. And it comes directly from the pit of hell to discourage the believer. Yeah, and I got to be honest, just like Paul, I got to be honest. I, I have experienced it before, and, and probably you have as well. Uh, being black in America, I know you have experienced this stonewalling spirit. If you, if you ever even tried to sell a product or, or start a service, uh, you have experienced stonewalling. And it is sad, but even true. Uh, if you are a preacher of the word of God, or you even share the word, in any kind of way you definitely have received and experienced stonewalling and even some stone faces but turn to your neighbor say this morning we tear down and pull down the spirit of stonewalling in your life oh some of y'all oh some of y'all ain't gonna say it huh you must be a stonewaller turn to your neighbor say neighbor i pull it down right now yeah, yeah. Oh, some of y'all still got a stone face. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I pull it down right now. Yeah, I conquer it. The blood is on it. Uh, the blood is against it. Uh-huh. The stone walling. Yeah, Paul, I believe one of the reasons Paul wrote 2 Corinthians 6 in spite of the stone walling spirit is because he had the truth in him. You got to know the truth. The Bible says it is a truth that will make you free. Uh, yeah, yeah. Make you free in order to have faith. Make you free in order to have power. Get your Bibles. Go to uh, Matthew 21, 42. Matthew 21, 42. Hey, Matthew 21, 42 is Jesus talking. And he said this, do you ever read in the scriptures, the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. Turn to your neighbor and say, this is the Lord's doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes you don't like what the Lord is doing, but turn to your neighbor and say, this is the Lord's doing. Yeah, and it is marvelous in our eyes. And here's the prophetic word for you this morning. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, you may have been rejected, but God is about to make you the head. Oh, somebody should have shouted on that right there. The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner and this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes let me give that word once again because your haters didn't like that turn to your neighbor say neighbor you may have been rejected but god just made you the head yeah stop crying about it pick yourself up dust yourself off that rejection is a sign that God is taking you higher. That rejection is a, time, is a sign that elevation is on the way. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're getting ready to be the head and not the tail. Above only and never beneath. You're getting ready to be a lender and not a borrower. You're getting ready to run some things. That stone wall and that rejection is elevation for the head. 
In other words, God says that rejection is authorization. Oh, somebody say authorization. Say it again until you feel it in your spirit. Say authorization. Say it again until you make the devil mad. Say authorization. Authorization, authorization. I know, I know the door was closed. I know the application was rejected and denied. I know this, but I hear this prophetic word in my ear. Authorization is coming for all of your rejection. I turn to your neighbor, say, What up, Arthur? What up, Arthur? Authorization is coming. Oh, what up, Arthur? You're now cleared, says, Oh, I need somebody to. I need somebody to get with me right there. You are now advancing, says the Spirit of the Lord. You are now getting ready to run things, said the Spirit of the Lord. Somebody shout authority. Shout authority again. God is putting you in places to lead and develop. God is putting you in places to lead, change, and develop. Somebody say, I hear authority. Yeah, you are about to upgrade and unite. Somebody say, I hear authority. Can we take about 10 seconds to give God praise for authority right there? Come on. Come on, 10 seconds. Come on. Somebody in here or watching online, you're getting ready to go higher. That rejection, that layoff. That furlough, God says, is a sign of elevation. Let's go deeper. The Bible says the Apostle Paul had to keep on encouraging the church at Corinth because he knew God had made them in his image and after his likeness and gave him dominion. And that word dominion in the book of Genesis 1:26 is the word authority. Everybody say authority. He knew they had authority because he had it. And it was given unto them by the Holy Ghost. It had been imparted unto them. When he planted the church at Corinth, he imparted the Holy Spirit. He imparted authority. Somebody shout authority. People of God, the church at Corinth received letters from Paul. And one of the reasons they received letters, of course, they were there to encourage them, to strengthen them, to have them to keep on, to carry on and keep on keeping on. But another reason why he sent letters was because they had problems. They had claims of spiritual superiority over one another. They had issues of suing one another in public courts. They had issues of sexual misbehavior. They, they, had, they, had, they had issues of abusing the communion meal. They had issues. They were eating communion because they was hungry. They were taking it without repentance. They had issues. Somebody say they had issues. Just like any church, just like all churches, they have issues. They, they lost their authority to commune because they had issues. And the reason, y'all, why they lost it, you can find it in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Go there real quick. Go there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Do y'all want to know why? Yeah. Let's pause for the cause real quick. Do y'all really want to know why? I just want to. I just want to believe. I want. I want to. I want to know that this morning because what I'm about to share unto you, if you hear me in the Holy Ghost, your life will never be the same. Like for real, for real. Ask your neighbor again. Do you really want to hear this? Say, do you really want change? Or are you cool with where you are? are? You, if you cool with where you are, this message ain't for you. You. You like the brother at the pool of Bethesda. Jesus asked them, "Do you want to be made whole, or you just want to sit here by this pool every day?" Watching everybody else get blessed and just letting Jesus pass you by. But turn to your neighbor and say, this is the year that I will not allow Jesus to pass me by. Hallelujah. I want to know the truth. Hallelujah. Here we go. The Bible says it right here. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Hallelujah. 
I almost didn't want to say this, but I'm going to say this. The Lord said to me as I was studying this, and you will see this on the news, you will see this on social media. There will be churches that you know about. They are losing authority right now because of this. What we're getting ready to read, this is why they're losing authority to commune with God because of this. Denominations you will see fall and crumble because of this. 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Paul said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Where the church at this morning? Where the church at? I, I need the church of the living God. I, I ain't coming here to fake and phony. I ain't coming here to make, I, I, I ain't coming for no show this morning. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers this ain't just talking about your relationships this this reason right here is why Corinth lost authority I wanted to put up a picture of Corinth in that day pastor pastor texts me around 12 30 in the morning and asks me have you gay have you got your slide together yet I said no not yet because I was searching for a picture of Corinth. But I, every time I kept looking for a picture of Corinth in Google Images, all I kept seeing was ruins. Because that is what happens to the life of a believer when you yoke yourself together with an unbeliever. You ruin your life. You ruin your business. You ruin your ministry. You ruin your family. You ruin your dreams and your aspirations and your goals. You ruin it. And people can tell you all day long to leave them alone. Don't walk with them. Cut the conversation short. Don't text them no more. Delete it. But if you choose to stay, hear me prophetically today. Get ready for ruins. The Bible is clear. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. That word yoke in the Greek tongue is the word zugos. Everybody say zugos. And that means to join. It, almost, it also means to couple up. It's a coupling. It's the beam of the balance. It's connecting the scales. It's the pair of balances. Somebody say Zugos. Somebody say Zugos again. God told me the reason why the authority to commune with him is lost is because there are some illegal yoking going on in the body of Christ. And if you ain't saying amen, I hope you're getting checked in your spirit. I hope, the, I hope the Holy Ghost kicking you all in your stomach right now. God told me why the authority to commune is lost is because there's illegal yoking going on in the body of Christ. You're yoking with money. You're yoking with folks for fame. You're yoking with popularity. You're yoking with connection. See, this is the old school preaching right here. This is that 1997 preaching right here. I come to prophesy the season of the church yoking with the world to accomplish the will of God is over. I said the season of the church yoking with the world to accomplish the will of God is over. And if you do it, you're going to be exposed. If you do it, you're going to show up on social media. If you do it, you will be in the newspaper. If you do it, God will shut your doors. If you do it. Jeanette, I need you praying in the Holy Ghost right through here. We don't want your music, world. 
We don't want your swag and your style and your influence, your affluence. We don't need it. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the power. For thine is the glory forever and ever. It's disheartening to see the church running behind Satan when we serve the one with all power. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The heavens, even the heavens, he's given unto himself, but the earth has he given to the children of men. The enemy is trespassing on your stuff and you running behind him. Oh, what the hell is wrong with the church? Why are you running behind the world? God said you're running behind the world like a broke hole. Yoking up with unbelievers. And I got to say this because it is the truth. There are some churches out here that don't believe God anymore. They believe in magic. They believe in government. They believe in economics. They believe in money and trends. Oh, y'all ain't going to say nothing to me, huh? Y'all ain't going to say amen up in here. But I can say this loud and clear. Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers, said the spirit of the living God. Jesus said, in Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, take my yoke. Hey. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly. And you'll find rest for your soul. Stop chasing the world. That song that came out was demonic years ago, talking about we are the world. The devil is a liar. And you had folks up there that was gay and lesbians and trans and trying to change the way we see things, talking about we are the world. That's why some of them are no longer here anymore. Matthew 11.30, look at the text. Look at it. I want you to see it because this ain't my, this ain't my gospel. This is the gospel. That's it. That's it. That's For my yoke is easy. Musicians, my yoke is easy. Singers, my yoke is easy. You can't sing for the world and sing for the church. You can't be entangled any longer. Listen, listen, y'all didn't heard this before, but I'm telling you, the season has shifted. It has changed because he is on his way back and he's coming for a church without spot or wrinkle or yoked up with the world. Then you're trying to bring that junk up here in the church. The devil is a liar. Keep playing with God. God told me the reason why the authority is lost. Because we have been yoked with the world, which is a hard yoke. It's a hard yoke. You yoke with alcoholism, it kills your liver. Hard yoke. Smoking weed all day and you think it's giving you an open eye, an open third eye so you can see something special? No, the Holy Spirit is there for you to give and teach you all things. But you rather seek marijuana than seeking the most high. He says, my burden is light. And if you feel like you need to leave, you can get up and go. It's okay. The Holy Ghost just told me that some of you want to leave right now. It's all good. You don't like this kind of preaching. You don't want to hear this kind of preaching. You say this is a lie and it don't work. But just check your social media over the next three months. You're going to see. 
God ain't playing in this season. It's time out. It's over with us yoking with the world. It's over. Second Corinthians six fourteen. For what fellowship be clause has righteousness with under what fellowship? Turn to your neighbor. Say what fellowship? You calling them trying to go to their house. They ought to be calling you trying to come to your house. You the light of the world. What in the world? Why are you trying to hang out with the unrighteous? Talking about, I'm going to change them. I'm going to, no, it's been four, five years. You still kicking it with them, and they still selling drugs. They still crazy out their mind. They still dropping it like it's hot. They still fornicating. They still lying and committing adultery. They still doing the same old, same old. But you want a fellowship. And then come up in here and say you're the light. The devil is a liar. Choose ye this day who you're going to serve. Choose ye this day who you're going to be with. Choose ye this way. And communion have, what, and what communion have light with darkness? What communion? Paul is asking the church at Corinth with all these issues. What fellowship? Does righteousness, right standing with God, have with unrighteousness? What fellowship do you have with those that are bound as the church of the living God? What fellowship? Talking about I'm getting with them just because they got some money. The devil is a liar. God got cattle on a thousand hills. Street pays with gold. Pearly gates. He's not a cheap, broke guy. Not the God I serve. And if you got one like that, he, you need to get away from him. I'm telling you. Not the one I serve. He is called El Shaddai. He's the God of more than enough with all sufficiency. He's never going to run out. People of God, light has no business in the dark. And darkness can't dwell in the light. That's why he called the light day and the darkness night in the beginning. Genesis 1, he was showing us there has to be a separation. There has to be a difference. But many want to be like the world. This is that old school preaching that we do so desperately need in this generation. If you are light trying to hang with darkness, I come to tell you, people of God, it will not work. You got too much light in you and on you. The good time that you having with darkness will cost you. You end up staying too long, wasting valuable time, spending way too much money, spending too much, destroying relationships with people of light while allowing darkness to cause destruction in your life. I'm about to go deep right here. Some of us love people more than we love God. And it's a hard one to say right here. Some of you love your crazy family members more than you love God. And they keep pulling you down over and over and over and over again. And God says enough is enough. You love what he created more than the creator. Some of you will let your son, your daughter, your cousin them, your daddy them, your mama them, your mama them that don't even believe God influence you and send you straight to hell with a first class ticket. But I believe today the Holy Ghost is moving. <laughs> I believe the day decisions are being made. I believe the day that somebody is waking up. Somebody is saying, I can't fellowship no more. I just tell them, just tell them, y'all crazy as hell over there. I ain't going over there. You want me to hang out where you drinking, cussing, smoking, uh, uh, fornicating, trying to get in somebody's pants? No, I'm good. 
keep your party. Don't invite me. My God, I already been to the best and the worst of them anyway. And usually when I left that party, guess what happened? I left incomplete. I left hungover and then the next morning hurting. Hungover on a toilet with a head hurting and pounding headache. Oh, it was some drama in that party or some fighting and some shooting. No, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I already been to the strip clubs. I'm good. I'm good on the cheap perfume and the high dollar watered down drinks. I'm good. And the truth is, there's somebody's daughter in that strip club that needs to be delivered and need a real career that does not involve her devaluing herself. Watch this. If dancing was so good and it makes that much money, why do they end up turning into rappers and they don't ever go back? Because it's not what it is talked up to be. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm good. I'm good in these streets. Come on. I'm good. I'm good. I, I, I walk with the most high. I ain't got no business in dark places. I, I walk with the most high. I don't have no business in dark places. I'm about to get in trouble right here, but I don't care. I ain't got no business in the club. I, I ain't got no business. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't, and just don't invite me. Just tell them don't invite me. I, I carry the light. Don't even invite me. I'm good. Thank you for not inviting me. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you got to tell folks, man, respect my light or I ain't coming. Respect my light or I ain't coming. I don't read nowhere in the text that Jesus was in a brothel. I don't read nowhere in the text where Jesus was at the club. I don't read it. Maybe you do. Tell me, please. At Demetri Decrees, hit me up. Let me know. But you ain't going to find them there. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not going to find them there. The Bible say he was at church. He was in the synagogues. Don't invite me. I'll be basking in the presence of the Lord. I'll be receiving spiritual downloads to, to pass by devils with supernatural light speed. And I got my first class ticket to heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got my first class ticket to heaven. Say, you can miss me with all that darkness. Say, I ain't coming. God wouldn't get me off of this thing. I, some of y'all so jacked up because you went to that party. And watch this. You didn't even know that the cook in the back was a witch. You didn't even know that the cook in the back was a witch. And she put potions in that food. And she put stuff in that drink that you drunk. And your light ain't been shining ever since you attended that party. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, it's time out. It's time for you to make a decision. Is it going to be light or darkness? Make a decision. Communion Sunday. We got to stand on the word. Somebody say, I am the light. Hallelujah. Away with darkness. People of God, I made a decision. I made a decision to unfollow folks to unsubscribe to a lot of these folks. I don't even agree with your lifestyle. Why are you posting trying to feed me every day with, the, with your nasty, stinky, devilish lifestyle? I saw something the other day. I said, oh, delete. Nope. Can't, can't look at you no more. Bye-bye. I didn't pick up my phone to dirty my spirit. I didn't pick up my phone to go into darkness. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to unsubscribe. A lot of these celebrities that you're following, you got to unsubscribe. They don't want nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. They don't want nothing to do with God. And with you following them and subscribing to them, you're literally saying, I agree. 
Oh, y'all don't hear me up here. I said you're literally saying, I agree with that way. Well, I can just see what they're doing. I can just see. Keep on seeing. Keep on seeing. Then one day, God, what, the, what, the, what the old folks used to say? You give the devil an inch, he'll take a mile. And what they end up saying about a lot of these celebs, they came out the church. And my thoughts are, they need to go back before they wreck their lives over money and fame like we've seen over and over and over again. This one died of an overdose. This one died of an overdose. This one died of a... How many times we got to see it? This one got shot up over some beef. This one in the club. Coming out the club. Going in the club. Turn to your neighbor say, what communion does light have with darkness? 2 Corinthians 6, 15. Because Paul ain't finished preaching, and I'm not either. And what concord have Christ with Bilal? Bilal, the devil. Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? An unbeliever? What concord? What agreement does Christ have with Bilal? That's another name for the devil. There is no agreement with Jesus and the devil. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's no agreement. And I can't understand why so many are agreeing with this world in this season. I'm talking about the very elect of God are agreeing with the world in this season trying to get ahead. You bow down to the world, but you can't even bow down and worship God. Matter of fact, ask your neighbor, when the last time you been on your knees? When the last time you lay prostrate before the Lord? When, when the last time? When the, when the devil tempted Jesus to bow down? What did Jesus say to him? And this is what you need to say. Luke 4, 8. Go there. Y'all know it. What did he say to him? He said, bow down. I'll I give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'll give you all the industries of the world. I'll give you all the economics. I'll give you all. I'll give you all the, all the businesses. I'll give you everything you need. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, thou, hast, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall you serve. So I serve. That does not sound like agreement to me. Turn to your neighbor and say, they don't sound like agreement to me. Many have agreed and made covenant with Satan and dismissed the sacred. They made covenant with him. They've taken blood oaths. Yeah, they've taken blood oaths. They've taken, they've taken these covenants on. They've drunk certain drinks to be in. And y'all know when you go out to eat with folks, you're making covenant with them, right? That's why you can't go out to eat with everybody. That's a covenant. We're getting ready to take communion in a minute. That's why Jesus did it at a table. Because it was a covenant agreement. And many of you got to get that stuff off of you. Make a decision today. You need to hear the word. What communion does light have with darkness? 2 Corinthians 6, 16. Y'all tired of me now. I know it's 12 o'clock. I know it's 12 o'clock. No, I can't do that, God lady. I can't do that. I got to rapidly do this. 2 Corinthians 6, 16. And what agreement have the, have the temple of God with idols? For ye are the what? Turn to your neighbor and say, God is on the inside of you. The Bible say the kingdom, they was looking for it. They said, is it low here or low there? No, Jesus said, it's on the inside of you. Put your hand on your belly and say, the kingdom is on the inside of me. Hallelujah. Say, God is living in me. And he said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. 
This is in the grace dispensation. This ain't Old Testament. This is for right now. Turn to your neighbor. Say, God want to walk in you. Say, God want to dwell in you. Temple of God, the house of God, has no business agreeing with dumb idols. What is an idol? An idol is a strategy that Satan uses to replace God. It's a strategy that Satan uses. It's a deity that Satan will use to replace God. Like these artists that you see. I'm going to name one in particular, Lil Nas X. Old Time Road, what's the name of the song? Old Time Road. Come on, he, he blew up and got all the children involved. And then what happened? He changed. And then he started worshiping what? Come on, he had some, he had some tennis shoes that had 666 on them. And, and now he up there making a mockery of Christ. What, communion. Got a whole communion table making a mockery of Christ. Satan uses these folks. Soon after they win their first Grammy, soon after they blow up, then they turn to the devil. And that thing will tempt you. I'm telling you. I ain't telling you something I, I heard. I'm telling you what I know. I used to be a GM of a station, a, a, a television station, a, a, a Fox television station. I had to sit down with national execs that put this stuff into play. And folks asking me why I resigned, because the devil is at the top. And I refuse to be in alignment with the world in any area of my life, even if it costs me losing some money for a little bit. Turn to your neighbor, say, God, I give it back to you. <laughs> He'll give it back to you. Good measure. Press down. Shake it together. I'm a witness running over. Watch this. Watch this. I used to have to go clock in to work. Now I go when I want to. See, when you get, I don't, I don't have to, I don't have to, oh, let me, no, 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 no. Some of them watching me right now, I just be like, okay, yeah, go ahead and do this, do that. Okay, all right, all right. I project manage now. Turn to your neighbor, say, neighbor, God is getting ready to exalt you when you turn your back on the world. I'm turning my back on the world. I'm turning my back on the world. I'm no longer going to follow them. I'm no longer going to be with them. I'm turning my back on the world. Call me crazy if you want to. Call me crazy if you want to. Call me a crazy person for Jesus if you want to. But I decided to, to make Jesus my choice. I decided to, to leave every idol. Turn to your neighbor say, neighbor, you got to dismiss them. Hold on, hold on. But I hear somebody saying, but Pastor Dimitri, we're supposed to love them. Yes, we should. But that does not mean you got to compromise. Michael Stampley wrote a song long time ago. Can't be no compromise. Can't be no compromise. Can't be no compromise. Uh, 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 that does not mean you don't love them. But I heard somebody say, you got to feed them with a long handle spoon. Keep your distance because they don't want God. I'm All right, y'all. That does not mean you got to sell your soul to get the click, to get with the click. Do sexual favors to get in the click. Start, start dating the same gender to get in the click. That's what we're talking about when you're compromising. Some of y'all around here like that old Brandy song. I want to be down. Turn to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I don't want to be down. I want to go up. God didn't call us to compromise. Paul ends it here and I'm done because some of y'all tired of me. Some of y'all done logged offline. I see it. I see. But I hope you made a decision before you clicked off in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 6, 17, come out from among them and be ye separated, separate, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And he says, I will receive you. That I'll receive you right there. He's saying, I will commune with you. 
Somebody say, he will communicate with you. Come on, say, he will speak to you. Come on, say, he will tell you his secrets. Come on, say, he will give you vision. Come on, say, he will commune with you. Say, he will give you mysteries. He, he, will, he will release power unto you. He will deliver prophecies unto you. He will give you dreams that you never dreamed before. He will give you a coat with many colors. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask, think, dream, or imagine. But you gotta come out. And that ain't God pushing you out. It's a decision you gotta make up in here to come out from among them. It's decision to time in the sanctuary it's decision time online I know it ain't popular to preach but turn to your neighbor say come out come out come out wherever you are come out come out come out wherever you are some of you uh, I hear this I hear this some of you some of you gonna have to change jobs uh, you need to hear me right here some of you are going to have to change jobs because there's going to be legislation that will come that will have, to, that will have you denying Christ. Y'all need to hear me. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all need to hear me. I said some of y'all are going to have to change careers. There's going to be legislation coming out that's going to cause you or try to tempt you to deny Christ. They already practiced it, it with COVID. Take this test or you're going to be fired. Y'all better hear me up in here. Come out, says the Lord. Because how are you going to work for the problem? Y'all need to hear me. Y'all need to hear me. See, see, the thing is, what you're trying to do is, I'm going to just stay in there and just do this. Nope, that is over. You're going to have to make a decision. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're going to have to make a decision. This ain't you vomiting up no demon running to the bathroom. It's a decision. This ain't nobody laying hands on you and you falling out. No, it's a decision. You done had too much of that and you done seen too much of that and you still ain't changed. It's a decision. Stand to your feet. As a man of God, called by God, chosen for such a time as this, it never sat right with me selling commercials in programming that promoted sex, drugs, alcohol, killing. It never sat right with me. The Holy Spirit continued to convict me. Then I caused myself going to the radio station. And I became the sales manager over there. And as I was doing that, the Lord convicted me again. How are you selling commercials behind what's killing the influence of God? I had to make a decision. I'm telling y'all today. Some of you are working for the problem and you know they're doing wrong. You know it's dirt going on. You know that business connected to drugs. You know Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, 2 Corinthians 6, 17, and the Amplified, and do not touch the unclean thing, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, do you want favor on your life? Say, do you want supernatural favor on your life? Say, tell them, say, come out. Now, what I want you to do is grab hands with them and start pulling them out. Come on, start pulling them out. God says, I want to commune with you, and I want to I wanna bring you favor. Somebody shout favor. That's what's coming when you come out. Somebody shout favor. Somebody shout supernatural favor. Put 2 Corinthians 6, 18. I want y'all to see this. And he said, I will be your father. And you shall be my sons and daughters. Saith the Lord. When I saw the phrase sons and daughters, you know the scripture that jumped out. Joel 2, 28. And I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And my sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. 
coming out, y'all, and communing with God, listen, will take sacrifice. Turn to your neighbor and say, have you sacrificed lately? Turn, ask him, say, have you sacrificed for him lately? Our life, listen, listen, our life, our service unto him, our participation unto him, our giving to him, it's all a sacrifice. Hebrews, 11, Hebrews 13, 15 says, let us offer the sacrifice of praise unto him. And then Romans 12 says, I want you, I beseech you, Paul writes to the Roman church, by the mercies of God, watch this, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Everybody say living sacrifice. Everybody in here done told a lie before. I'll raise my hand first. I didn't told a lie before. Sometimes I told a lie to stop hurting somebody's feelings. My breath stank? No, it don't. It don't stink. But this season, you got to make the sacrifice, watch this, and tell the truth. That's the living sacrifice. That's over and over again. Watch this. I fornicated. I used to sleep around. But now I make the sacrifice and I keep my body. Single women, come on. I keep my body. Evangelist, evangelist came up here and told you she don't let nobody drive up her driveway no Keep your body. Turn to your neighbor and say, the Lord said, keep your body. Sacrifice, y'all. Yeah, watch this. I used to drink, yes. Cranberry vodka, double shot, sometimes triple. Belvedere. But I make the sacrifice to stay sober-minded. Turn to your neighbor and say, make the sacrifice. That's a living sacrifice. I used to be the highest in the room. Gone off that purple. Oh, you, you missing me. Gone off that green. Gone off the sativa. I didn't even like indica. But I make the, some of y'all don't even know what I'm talking about. But I make the sacrifice. Turn to your neighbor and say the sacrifice. Sacrifice and stay sober minded. And listen, this was the grace dispensation. Look at look at this. I'm done right here. I promise you. Somebody say, I promise you. This is this is fourth close. He done. Proverbs 16:25. And if this right here don't help you, I'm, I, I, I can't. I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe another preacher for you. But listen, Proverbs 16, 25. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Instead of me choosing another way, instead of me choosing your way, instead of me choosing their way, we got to choose the way. Turn to your neighbor and say, the truth, the life, and his name is Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus is the way. I got to say this in my clothes, my fifth clothes. I got to say this because I heard it yesterday and it, it convicted me. I'm going to release it in here today. If we do not stop we are going to destroy ourselves. It's called self-destruction because it seemeth right to us. And it's not. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, you know when you was wrong. You know you was wrong for saying that, for doing that. Come on. You know you was wrong. Repent today. I believe that this word is a prophetic warning. 
I hear it in the Holy Ghost. Stop it, the Lord says, before it kills you. The Lord dropped 107.20 in our man of God's spirit when he started this church. That God sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Lift your hands, close your eyes right there. Come out in your spirit. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Make the decision to come out right now. People of God, there are many. The Bible speaks about this in 2 Thessalonians, that there is a great falling away that is hitting the church. Hold on, no singing right now. No singing right now. I'm sorry, but no singing right now. Hold on. There, there's a great falling away. Listen, great falling away. Those that are calling evil good and good evil. It's a great falling away. But turn, but go ahead and open up your mouth and say to the Lord, say, Lord, I want to be with you. Say, I want to commune with you. Say, I choose to come out this morning. Say, I choose to come out from among them. And I know it's not going to be easy. I got love for some of them. But I got to make this decision for my family, for my children, for the next generation, for my church. Evangelists got up here and said it. We got to represent the house of God. And if you're choosing not to, God sends prophets to tell you, to warn you before your destruction. Just like he sent a prophet to David who killed Uriah. Nathan, Nathan came and said, David, you done messed up. Repent, get it right. Before you get the kingdom ripped from you. That happened to his predecessor Saul. He ain't listening. And the kingdom was ripped from him. You better hear me today. I'm speaking to Eli's. I'm speaking to Eli's. I'm speaking. You need to hear me, Eli. You ain't telling your children to get it together. You can't be light and darkness. And if you don't leave here with nothing else, leave here with a decision in Jesus name. If you receive that word, give God praise. I said, if you receive it, give him a thunderous praise. If you receive him, give him a thunderous praise. Give him a, give, come on, come on, come on. Give him praise. A coming out praise. A coming out praise. A commune with him praise. A come.